Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us at today's event. My name is Nina Jord and I'm your host today. I'm also the Director of Strategy and Market Development for Ballard Power Systems. Ballard Power Systems is the leading global provider of zero emission fuel cell solutions for mobility. We are excited to welcome you all today to the future of marine propulsion. Today, we will be introducing Ballard's latest hydrogen fuel cell module for the marine industry. But first of all, a little housekeeping. In the lower part of your screen, you have three different options. First of all, you can get more information of our marine products in Ballard's marine dedicated area on our website. Number two is that you can download all the relevant material for the FC Wave product. And finally, you can book a meeting with one of our fuel cell experts. If you have any questions today, please remember to type them into the question box in the control, in the control panel at the bottom of your screen. We will have time for answering all questions later during our presentation. And after the event, we will send you a mail with a link to all material relevant for the marine product as well as to the recording of this session. And we will also send along a Q&A document answering all the questions. As we are more than 1,000 attendees today, we are expecting quite a lot of questions and we foresee that we might not have time to answer all of them. But please do rest assured, all questions will be answered in the document that we will send you later. Finally, if you are experiencing any technical issues, please note that there is a support option where you can click I need help in the upper right corner of your screen. And here you will get some different options uh, for, technic for technical support if you need it. We have a group of experts. We have a group of experts joining us today to introduce Ballard's latest product in innovation, the FC Wave. Now let me introduce them to you. First, we have Jesper Thompson. Jesper Thompson is the CEO and president for Ballard Power Systems Europe. Jesper will tell us about how fuel cells will help the marine industries addressing the emissions on the water and in the ports. Jesper has been the president and CEO for Ballard Europe since 2011, and he holds a master's degree in mechanical and thermal engineering. What I find most interesting, however, is that actually Jesper started his career in the marine industry and he's been working for the last 20 years with fuel cells and is highly dedicated to the work we're doing at Ballard with bringing zero emission fuel cell solutions to a sustainable planet. Then we'll be joined by Dennis Jensen, Ballard Europe's Vice President of Technology. Dennis will introduce the FC Wave and give us some insights into the, all the unique features of the product. Dennis joined Ballard as the VP of Technology in 2018, and he holds a master's degree of science in industrial processes. Dennis heads the technology activities for Ballard Europe, and he has many years of experience in bringing innovative technology products to the markets at international level. And to delve into what makes Ballard's marine product the best in class, we will also have a dedicated Q&A session with Dennis later. We've also reached out to two of Ballard's partners in the marine sector to learn firsthand about their experience collaborating with Ballard. Jostan Boken is the vice president Global Product Manager, Energy Storage and Fuel Source with ABB Marine and based in Oslo. His background includes 25 years of experience in the maritime sector in ship automation, in navigation and propulsion, of which the last 20 years have been in ABB. And also joining us is Ivan Ostvik, who is the Project Manager at Norled. He has a bachelor's degree in naval architecture and offshore engineering and a PhD degree 
in risk-based ship design. Evanos Twig has, in cooperation with LMG Marine, developed the hydrogen-driven Yelmeland car ferry, uh, which will be in, operating, in operation in the route in 2021. He's also involved in the development of a hydrogen-driven high-speed ferry to be in operation in 2024, 2023 to 2024, which is also a project Norled is doing in collaboration with Ballard. And with that, now we can begin. Jesper, please take it away. Thank you, Nina. I'm happy to talk to you all today. The marine industry is facing pressure to reduce carbon emissions. Governments, port authorities, and non-governmental organizations across the world are tightening emission standards for vessels. The proposed legislation will require, will require emissions reductions of a magnitude the industry has never seen before. To meet these changes, Fleet owners and operators will need zero emission vessels for at least part of their fleet within a very few years. Thanks to their success in heavy duty land vehicles, fuel cells are now being integrated into vessels. Fuel cells will play a key role in the future helping marine industries address greenhouse gas emissions on the water and in ports. Already now, hydrogen fuel cells can power ships over medium distances, and progress is being made to make this technology capable of powering large ocean-going vessels. Early applications for fuel cells include coastal and inland ferries and barges. The fuel cell technology is suitable for powering ships with zero-emission propulsion, also for auxiliary power loads, and it can also be used for shore power in the ports. So what is a fuel cell? The proton exchange membrane, PEM fuel cell, is a, is a technology generating clean electricity from hydrogen through an ele electrochemical process to power a range of different applications. The fuel for the fuel cell is hydrogen, which you can see uh, on the upper left-hand side. And the fuel cell needs oxygen for the conversion, which you can see on the upper right-hand side. Electricity is produced, as you can see, in the top, and the only emissions from the fuel cell are water, water vapor, and heated cooling water. That's what you can see on the low right-hand side. Over the years, fuel cells have proven their performance in a variety of applications, including buses, trucks, cars, passenger cars, I would say, and, and uh, forklifts, but also now in passenger trains. For ships, fuel cells using renewable hydrogen are the most viable. It's a true zero emission option Fuel cells will play a key role in helping marine industries address the greenhouse gas emissions on water and in ports. The key benefits of fuel cell solutions are the following four, as you can see here. Longer range. Hydrogen has much higher energy density than batteries. Fuel cell powered vessels have longer runtime and travel farther before the need for refueling. But also fast and flexible refueling. Hydrogen vessels are refueled quickly, and hydrogen can be stored in large, large gaseous or, or liquid hydrogen facilities, allowing for convenient refueling when you get to port. Also, modular design for scalable solutions. Fuel cell systems are installed in parallel. They are dispatchable, can be dispatched over the ship to meet the variable, variable power requirements. These flexible solutions adapt well to vessel space constraints. And the fourth key benefit is the stable, reliable power. Hydrogen fuel cells have proven their performance in thousands of heavy-duty vehicles 
for many years. Fuel cell systems require very little maintenance, have low maintenance cost, and an extremely long service life. What you see here is an example illustration of a fuel cell marine vessel. It's powered by an electrical system, which you can see in the lower middle. It includes both fuel cells and batteries working seamlessly together, providing efficient zero emission power. The hydrogen system is designed so the fuel cell can operate at highest efficiency and the batteries are taking the transient power requirements. The fuel cells can replenish the batteries at times when the ship is operating with low power requirements. Maximum power can be delivered by the fuel cells and the batteries together. And for cruising power, the fuel cells basically can deliver power directly. Just like batteries, fuel cells are electrochemical devices converting electricity, converting hydrogen into highly efficient power in an electrochemical process. The main difference is with a fuel cell, energy is stored in the hydrogen fuel. That's what you can see in the hydrogen tanks, the hydrogen storage, um, lower right-hand side. As long as fuel is available in the hydrogen storage, the fuel cell power systems will produce electricity as a generator. The only emissions, emissions from a fuel cell are water, water vapor, and heated cooling water. When fueled by renewable hydrogen, a fuel cell power system is a true well-to-wake zero emission power solution. Ballard is a world leader in fuel cell products for marine applications. Ballard has established its global marine center of excellence in Denmark, dedicated to engineering, manufacturing, and servicing of fuel cell marine applications. And now, with the introduction of FC Wave, the world's first marine dedicated fuel cell module, shipbuilders have access to the same reliable, safe, powerful fuel cell technology that is powering thousands of heavy duty vehicles around the globe. At Ballard, we believe that implementing this technology is a critical step in reducing emissions from ships and cleaning up the air for a more sustainable world. Thank you. Thank you, Jesper. I see we already have quite a few questions in the chat. If you want to join the conversation with us, please do not forget to type in your questions. And now I will hand it over to Dennis Jensen, our VP of Technology. Dennis, take it away. Thank you very much, Nina. I'm super excited to be here today to finally launch the FC Wave. This is the culmination of so many hours of work from all our design teams of fuel cell experts. But with no further delay, let's meet FC Wave.
Well, thank you very much. What a nice video. Now let's have a deeper look into the FC Wave module. FC Wave is built on proven components from Ballard's heavy duty module portfolio to deliver reliable performance, high power density, and favorable economics. Its size and weight is minimized to making, making the product easy to integrate in different types of vessels. We've chosen to focus on five key aspects. Safety, stack technology, ease of integration, serviceability, and modular design. First of all, safety is key for Ballard. The module will be typed approved, which will simplify the safety process for all our customers. Key features regarding safety. We have two controllers, one for operation and one dedicated for safety. We designed a hydrogen enclosure to take care of the special safety requirements for all the hydrogen related components. We have multiple safety features embedded in every part of the module with uh, the required redundancy in key locations. With our unique hydrogen enclosure design, we contained and managed the handling of the hydrogen within the unit. This will make it much easier for our customers to design the fuel cell room. I would like to show you the core technology. In the heart of FC Wave is Bala's latest generation fuel cell stack, the FC Gen LCS stack. The LCS stack is a result of Ballard's more than 30 years of experience in fuel cell and stack modeling and design. As a matter of fact, Ballard has invested more than $1.5 billion in developing of the fuel cell PIM technology. The LCS stack is designed to deliver long-term performance, low life cycle cost, thanks in combination of the following high durability, we have more than 30,000 hours of stack life, reliable low cost carbon plates, which are lasting the lifetime of the module, compact stack design has led to increase the power density to two kilowatts per liter, even for heavy duty applications. The, oper the operating temperature of the stack is around 80 degrees C, which brings uh, valuable uh, heat to the vessel at a bit lower temperature. Uh, I'll get back to that later. Let's have a look at how to integrate FC Wave into your vessel. Through our cooperation with our partners, we designed the FC Wave to meet the industry requirements. FC Wave has connections on two sides, at the lower front and the back of the top part. We also designed the unit to be able to divide into two parts for easily handling in narrow spaces. I'll show you how it's done later. All interfaces in the front are directly accessible for easy service and maintenance work. Through the two large cabinet doors, you'll have easy access to key components inside. To protect all the front connections, we prepared the design for a false floor installation. Let's have a deeper look into the different connections. In the bottom left, we have the hydrogen fuel supply connections. This is a safe double wall design, well known from LNG vessels. Next to it, we have the ventilation air. As a safety precaution, we ventilate our hydrogen enclosure to always ensure a low concentration of hydrogen. Next to the ventilation air, we have the controls and communication connections. FC Wave is prepared for different controls like Ethernet and CAN bus. Here you'll also find the hardwired digital in and outputs. Below this is the electrical DC-DC output with a range from 350 to 700 watt DC, um, volt DC, sorry, connected in a two times 300 amps or one times 550 amps configuration. Next to the DC-DC electrical outputs, we have the cooling loops. The two first DN32 connectors are low temperature cooling. 
This is for electrical drives, which only needs to be cooled a few kilowatts, but at a lower temperature. These can also be routed to the main cooling loop. The larger DN50 valves are the primarily high temperature cooling loop. The FC wave is designed with an internal heat exchanger for the stack cooling. This is a very important benefit as, it, uh, as we are less dependent on the water quality from the vessel. FC waves should not be connected to salt water cooling. In the top you'll see the connection for filling and drain of the internal cooling loop. As the last connector in the bottom, we have the process water outlet. Now moving up, we'll see two air vents. These two air vents are needed for running the fuel cells. They pull air from the uh, outside of the cabinet. The air in the FC room should be filtered for salt particles. Going further up, in the top of the FC wave, we have the process exhaust. Next to it, we have the H2 enclosure ventilation outlet. Both of these exhaust will need to be vented to the outside of the vessel. This completes the focus on the different connections. Now let's have a look at serviceability and product support. Serviceability is key in FC Wave. We work very hard to design the module for long lifetime usage. Many of the components can be accessed from the front, but for larger scheduled maintenance, we are able to sli slide the top part away from the bottom part. As mentioned earlier, this feature also makes FC Wave easier to handle when there are limited spaces or when retrofitting an existing vessel. You will benefit from Ballard's customer support infrastructure, developed to support thousands of fuel cell buses and trucks operating globally and now adding this to our marine activities. Bella provides comprehensive and flexible service packages that will cover the module's lifetime. Service includes preventative maintenance, remote monitoring, spare parts and on-site service. Bella's highly professional technicians with extensive product knowledge are able to provide technical support 24-7. Ballard offers a complete training program to support the installation, operation, and maintenance of FC Wave. Upon completing of the training program, attendees will be certified technicians, fully capable of servicing the fuel cell module. As the last focus area, we'll take a look at how to scale the FC Wave installations. FC Wave is built into 200 kilowatt modules to accommodate the different needs for power output, weight distribution, and redundancy. We can add modules to even match megawatt scale. What you see here is how modules easily can be coupled in parallel. FC Wave is developed based on more than 20 years of experience within the heavy duty market. It's designed hand in hand with the marine industry to meet the highest safety standards. As the FC Wave only emits water, we believe that our true zero emission fuel cell technology will play a huge role in decarbonization of the maritime industry. As the world moves towards a future zero emission mobility, we at Ballard striving towards sustainability across the entire life cycle of our products. With many years of fuel cell manufacturing experience, Ballard has developed elite uh, industry-leading processes designed to minimize the energy intensity and environmental impact of our production. At the end of a fuel cell's products use for life, processes ensure efficient recovery of highly valuable uh, metals, minimizing the waste entering the landfill. As an example, we reuse 95% of our platinum. So we are very happy to continue to deliver fuel cell power for a sustainable planet. You ready again, Nina? Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. But I won't let you off the hook yet. Let's go ahead and take some questions now. You ready? Yep. 
We've received, <laughs> received a lot of questions already, so thank you so much for that. But the first question, Dennis, I would like to ask you is, and I think you mentioned it, but let's just repeat if you have already answered. Mm -hmm. Is the system modular and scalable? How big can it get? And how many systems can you put together? That's a very good question. We, we have made it modular uh, with that purpose of scale. Um, so we, we've so far worked on up to five megawatt of uh, size in, in, uh, in a total system. So yes, it, it's very scalable. OK, thank yeah. you so much. And let me just go to the next question. Do you need? to change or rebuild the fuel cell module at some point? So we have uh, several uh, maintenance programs in place that will um, take care of the lifetime of the module. Uh, but you need only a bigger uh, overhaul of the unit when you reach up to 30,000 hours. Okay. Yeah. And again, it's difficult to choose between all these questions, but here's the Here's a tricky one. Can your ballast fuel cells run on ammonia? Well, not directly. Uh, you, you need to get the hydrogen out of the ammonia, and you can do that by reforming it. Uh, we, we solely focus on running on hydrogen, as we believe that's the most economical way of, of running the fuel cells. Okay. But it is possible, but, uh, but it's, it's a slightly more delicate process to do that. And I saw another one. Slightly related to that, it's uh, can fuel cells, can ballast fuel cells, can they run on liquid hydrogen as well? Yes, so uh, they don't run directly on liquid hydrogen. The liquid hydrogen is, is uh, transformed into gas before it reaches the fuel cell. So FC Wave is basically not aware if it's liquid or gaseous hydrogen uh, supplied to it. So it's prepared for both. Yes. All right. Here's again a question related to the hybridization, I believe, between the fuel cell and the battery. Here mm -hmm. it's asked, how much battery capacity does the fuel cell system need? Well, it, uh, what we do with our customers, we look into the, um, uh, the way that they design their power needs for, for each ferry. So however the uh, utilization of the power when entering ports or when, when accelerating, that's what we look into. And then we help them design the package of, of batteries and fuel cells. So it is really individual from, it is. from vessel it is. to vessel. And we can simulate it. So it, it's, uh, we have a very good understanding of that system. All right. And a little bit more related to the batteries again. Which advantages does the fuel cell system have compared to batteries? Well, fuel cell basically supplies the vessel with power as batteries. But we can supply power as long as we have hydrogen. We also have some weight advantages when you have uh, the requirement of, of a lot of power. So that there are multiple advantages for fuel cell. For very short period, uh, for very short distances, you could look at battery only, but as soon as you go medium distance, as Jesper mentioned earlier, uh, Hydrogen and, and fuel cell makes a lot of sense. All right. Isn't it also something related to the utilization of the fuel cell that batteries do take longer time to recharge? And if you need to run them like 24 7, it will be so, difficult with the recharging time of the batteries. Absolutely. So, so the quick refueling, as, as, as I also mentioned earlier, is, is a part of it as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. And another one comparing technologies. What are the advantages of your fuel cell to SOFC fuel cells or other fuel cell, fuel cell types? Well, we, we, um, we solely focus on the PIM fuel cell because we believe that it's the most uh, proven technology. And we, we want to make sure that our customer has a very good experience with the lifetime of the product. So the SOFC technology has been around for a long time, but but we solely believe in the PIM fuel cell is the best technology. Okay. Regarding the safety, which you mentioned is a core value mm -hmm. of Ballard, uh, we have someone asking, does FC Wave have type certification for marine vessels? So we, we are working on that, and it's in a, 
uh, let's say, very long process, and we, it's looking good, and we are uh, hoping to receive it by the um, first quarter of 2021. So we will be the first having a typed approved marine module. Okay, thank you so much. Hmm? So another question hmm? here. What happens when the fuel cell reaches the end of life? Is it possible to recycle a fuel cell system? Yes, as I mentioned earlier, we, we uh, set in place a lot of processes to make sure that we use our materials. As an example, as I mentioned also, we will use 95% of the platinum. So um, very much indeed, and it's, it's, it's high on, on our focus. I'm just checking to see if we have time for more questions. We do have time for a few more questions. Okay. Um, this is a good question. How do we fuel the ship with hydrogen? Yes. So the fuel, the fuel is, is uh, fueling is handled in dock, and it um, is handled by larger tanks that's uh, sitting on the dock and then fueling the ship when it's in dock. So it's it's basically like you're used to with diesel or any other fuel. All right. So quite simple. Can it also happen offshore? Well, you can probably sail it out and then put it on the ship outside, yeah. All right. Not sure if this is too difficult to answer, but what size diesel engine can your fuel cell replace? So if we... If we look into the megawatt scale, we can go pretty big. Mm? Um, I think it's, it's, it's much up to what type of vessel you have, what is the application actually doing with the diesel engine. So um, for us, it's, it's, it's a matter of the megawatt scale, how much you, you want and how much you can fit into your vessel. All right. Yeah. Let's take one last question and then let's move on to the next part. It's, it's so difficult to really choose between all these questions, but here it says, can several fuel cell modules and batteries be combined for a redundant system? Yes, so what is very neat about this fuel cell system is that you have uh, divided your power into multiple modules. So if you have any issues with one of them, a breakdown or a maintenance, uh, scheduled maintenance you want to do, you still have the ability to pull more power from the rest of the module stack. So, so it's, it's, the redundancy is embedded in the system itself. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much, Dennis. You're welcome. I'm pretty sure we'll have more questions to be answered later, and thanks for a very informative conversation. Sure, you're welcome. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so as mentioned prior to this, we have a close collaboration with the marine industry and we have reached out to them to learn firsthand their experience collaborating with Ballard on our fuel cells. So next on the agenda, we have ABB and Norlet joining the conversation. These leading players in the industry have already recognized fuel cells as a key element of the decarbonization of the marine industry. So here we go, ABB and Norlet. In ABB, we are currently looking at how we can cut emissions in, in shipping, and we see fuel cells in combination with hydrogen as a very important uh, enabler to, to achieve that. Uh, what we find very unique about Ballard and, and our experience with Ballard is the, the competence of, of the people, and the long track record, and, and the history of Ballard in fuel cells. Uh, we see that the new product will um, make a, a huge uh, contribution to, to, to shipping. In Airbnb, we believe that uh, fuel cells will have a great role to play in, in maritime applications, and we foresee a huge growth in applying fuel cells, starting now with a small scale uh, project, smaller type of vessels, and we expect this to grow into the large vessel segments in the megawatt scale as well. Hi, Iran Östrik here from Norland in Norway. We are now constructing the world's first hydrogen driven car ferry using Ballard's fuel cells. This is the 200 kilowatt maritime application that Ballard has been developing for some years. 
We've been active in, uh, in the cooperation with Bella to develop this fuel cell uh, together with our naval architects and ship operators. So it's been a very, very fruitful cooperation and uh, we now are looking forward to get this ferry in operation in the autumn of 2021. The ferry is currently being constructed now and the, uh, the final engineering, the, the final risk assessment is ongoing. So we will look forward to get this ferry up running uh, next year. Um, for the future market, we, we see that uh, hydrogen driven ferries and fast ferries will be the next. And in all that, we have ambitions to, to, to have larger fuel cell applications on board in the megawatt range, where we see the ships will be larger and also faster running on hydrogen. So this is uh, certainly a stepping stone for NOLED and for Ballon to, to get this uh, project up running. Thank you so much, ABB and NORLED. And now we will go ahead and take some time for even more questions. And just a reminder, even though we have already received a lot of questions, please remember to type in any questions you might have into the question box in your panel below. I would like to ask for this session, first of all, Jesper Thompson, the President and CEO for Ballad Europe, to join me in the question session. Jesper, could I please ask you to step in? Thank you, Nina. You're welcome. So, Jesper, I hope you are ready because there is really a lot of questions here. I'll do my best. All right. So, the first question is very much related to the markets of mm -hmm. fuel cell systems. So, the question says, geographically, Europe, especially Northern Europe, seems to be driving the shift to low carbon shipping. Is there much hydrogen activity happening in other regions of the world? For sure. And it, it's right. Europe and Northern Europe, a lot is happening. We see a lot of interest. But I would, see, I would say it's a, it's a general thing. Uh, and, and especially we see also a lot of interest coming from, from Asia and we see a lot of interest coming from North America. So it seems like the, the interest is uh, picking up on, on a global scale. Basically, we have requests um, uh, coming from all over, as things are now. Okay, so it's really an increasing market. It seems to be a very interesting uh, market and a lot of pressure for, for emission reductions, yes. Okay, thank you. Then we have another question related to some of the safety aspects that Dennis also talked to earlier, but I will try to address it to you. Mm -hmm. Is it okay, is it really okay here, it says, to have hydrogen on a passenger vessel near the passengers? So, so when we uh, use hydrogen on, on, a, on a vessel, and also on a passenger vessel, we do it, we have it all certified and we have strict requirements for safety. And we are following those strict requirements for safety. So you can consider it completely safe. There are a lot of measures taken to make sure that nothing can happen. And in fact, hydrogen is fairly easy to handle because it has this, uh, this uh, uh, light buoyancy. So it basically escapes if anything happens. So, so don't be concerned about hydrogen on the passenger vessels. We, we do have hydrogen in buses. We do have hydrogen in passenger cars. We have hydrogen in many places. That's no issue. It's not an issue. Is hydrogen more dangerous or less dangerous than a diesel uh, engine, for example? That's a difficult discussion. Um, so, so I would, of course, say hydrogen is less, is, uh, is less risky than diesel because we have all these uh, measures and it's all regulations are new and the latest standards, so, so um, it's a difficult discussion. But hydrogen escapes well and therefore should be no issue on board a ship. That sounds good. We have a lot of questions here related mm, to, the, to the comparison between hydrogen and diesel and batteries. But it's good to hear that it's absolutely safe to, to install it on a vessel. If it's not safe, we will not get it approved. So it's, it's fairly simple. Of course, yeah. Yeah. of course. We have a question here with regards to the location of the system, of the fuel cell system mm -hmm. in the ship. The question says, where on board of the vessel can the FC wave system be installed? What are the installation possibilities slash restrictions in terms of spaces on board? Right, right. So, so basically, I think Tension mentioned the dimension of it. It's like 
two meters, one and a half meter in the meter. Uh, but, but if you have enough room, basically the only, um, uh, the only thing is that we need to have access to where it's installed. We need to have access to the outside for venting. We need to have access to the hydrogen piping. We need to have access for the electricity to the DC bus. But you can in, in fact place the, the, the fuel cell systems around the ship as, as, um, as the design of the ship allows. So it, it's very flexible. Usually you, you, you need to have it in kind of an engine room. So you can make several smaller engine rooms or you can make one big engine room like you do for a diesel generator, like you do with a battery room for batteries. It's kind of the same, just like batteries, fuel cells are just uh, very modular and very flexible. Okay. So I, I believe there will be a lot of discussions about how you can utilize this flexibility in ships going forward because you can, you can disperse it around the ship. Good. Actually, that took me to a question I just saw here. A little bit related to it, but then again, in which type of vessels can fuel cells be applied? Are there any specific types that are more suited than others? So I think the first markets we see are, are uh, ferries on shorter distances and barges and it's coastal, it's inland, that's where you have access to hydrogen, uh, where you have easy access to hydrogen. Smaller ships, not too long routes, more than one hour, if it's less than one hour, often batteries have a good value proposition, more than one hour, but not too large ships as things are today. We are going into larger ships while we are finding solutions with our partners on the hydrogen side to also have very big um, capacity of hydrogen on board. But today we are focusing on smaller ships and uh, uh, something coastal inland where you have easy access to, to hydrogen. All right. Again, a question is related to, to where to put the different components on the system. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, a listener is asking, does the hydrogen storage system have to be located separately from the fuel cell system? Uh, it has to be located outside the fuel cell room, I believe. But, uh, but the hydrogen system also can be placed uh, different, in different places on, on board the ship. We are not supplying the hydrogen storage, so there are experts with our partners on, on hydrogen storage, so I will not answer that in depth, but, but uh, in general what we see is that hydrogen can be placed basically anywhere on the ship as long as you are able to vent because of hydrogen going up quickly, you should just be able to vent it for, for safety. Um, so lots of opportunities uh, with where you put the hydrogen storage. Okay, great. There's a certain amount of questions also here related to servicing and maintain, maintaining mm -hmm. the system and the fuel cells on the system. There is one question. How often does the fuel cell system need service mm -hmm. and what are the maintenance requirements? Yes, so, so basically you can say the fuel cell, that's depending on the, the runtime when the different service um, intervals, uh, how they are uh, dispersed over the over time. Uh, so it's based on uh, on runtime. Usually, we say the 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 five year service. That's a that's a major overhaul. So if it's running very intensively, uh, many hours a day, like eighteen hours a day, that's probably where you end. You meet the end of life on the fuel cell membranes. So that's a major overhaul after let's say five years. It might also be ten years, depending on on the utilization of of the ship and the fuel cell. Then we have other components. We have some filters and so on with shorter maintenance uh, schedules. So that's probably like one year. Um, that's all part of, of our uh, scheduled preventive maintenance, which is, uh, which is basically in the manuals. So, so we are using all the experience that we have from the buses and from the trucks and so on, um, using the same um, uh, maintenance uh, setup. Okay. Great, thank you. As I said, there are several other questions um, related to the servicing. Here we have two or three questions more or less related to the same. Who are able to service the fuel cell system mm. uh, is one of them. And does it, <laughs> does it require special education or training to service the fuel cell system? 
and can Ballard offer this training is another question. Mm. So that was a lot of questions in one. Could have linked <laughs> questions, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so so it, it, it takes training. So starting point is if, if you are a technician and you're able to, to, uh, to handle service on board a ship, then you should have some training to be uh, a certified uh, FC wave technicians. So, so basically, it could be the engineer on board the ship, it could be the engineers um, at, at, the, um, at, uh, at the yard where you're going to, um, whoever is the service provider on, on, the, on any ship, those engineers can be trained by Ballard. So we have a, we have a training program that we go through and that's a, that's a training program of a, of a few days where you learn uh, about everything like uh, hydrogen safety and fuel cell safety and fuel cell maintenance. You also get some, uh, some, some on, on, uh, on the installation and so on. Um, so to be a certified um, FC wave technician, you need to have training from Ballard, either in one of the Ballard facilities or we can, we can go and do it at the customer facility where the, where, wherever the customer wants to, to have the training. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jesper. I have one last question for you. Um, and I think this is a question many people would like to have the answer to. When will the FC Wave module be available for delivery? Mm. That's a good question. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, we have a delivery time of uh, 12 months, uh, as things are now. Um, that's kind of a delivery time that, that enables us to... to, uh, uh, to, to it seems like that's that's the, how the, 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 the marine business is, um, and uh, within uh, the, that delivery time of, of 12 months, uh, we can basically take orders today. The first units we are delivering to our customers will be delivered in a, in a very few months uh, from now. So, assume around 12 months of uh, delivery time with some flexibility. So people better place their orders now. That's a good idea. Yes, yes. great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jesper. Actually, I do also have a few more questions for Dennis. So if you don't mind, okay. I'd like to ask Dennis to come to the stage. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Jesper. Hi again. Hello. <laughs> Hello again, Dennis. Yeah, sorry. I, I thought I let you off the hook. But well, actually, I'm glad I do to have be here, a few so more yeah. for you. Go ahead. Okay, great. We do have a question from... Uh, one who's asking, what is the possibility of retrofitting an older vessel with fuel cell technology? Right, so uh, the way we designed FC Wave, we, we, we took the opportunity to break the unit into two parts. That's also for easy ret retrofitting of existing vessels. So a lot of our customers were questioning how can we actually fit that uh, unit into our vessel, and now they actually have the possibility to do that. So, yes, it's... it's Prepared for that. It's prepared for yes. it. Thank you. And then we had this question related to um, related to where the system has to be installed. Does it have to be in a separate room? Or could it be indoor or outdoor? Or in a special room in general? So Yeah, so like a, a, a diesel engine has to be in an engine room, we have the similar uh, setup with a fuel cell. So you make a, a dedicated fuel cell room where you put in your installations. One of the key aspects of a fuel cell room is we have to have like a safe environment so the fuel cell can breathe in um, air without salt particles. So okay. that's key, yeah. Thank you so much. One more question and I think then I'll let you off the hook. I'm just checking how many questions I have time for. All right, great. <laughs> Can the fuel cell operate in a hybrid system with a diesel engine or only with batteries? Well, uh, technically it can. Uh, we, we, we don't see it, but any system that has a DC power need, uh, we can supply the DC power. So if you want to combine it with a uh, genset of a diesel or uh, batteries or, or something else, we can basically tap into that system. But we don't, we don't generally see that much. It's mostly batteries. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, it looks like we're running out of time now to answer more questions. But thank you so much, everyone, for great questions. They were all really, really good. And I see we would love to answer all of them now. But we will certainly send the document with the Q&As. And you will get the answers afterwards in an email. 
So thank you, Dennis, as well. You're welcome. <laughs> well, with that, I can only say thank, it, thank you, everyone, today for joining us, introducing FC Wave. We are very excited about the future of this product. And to learn more about the product and to get into touch with a ballot representative, please contact us either via the book a meeting uh, option that you have here in the bottom of your panel or contact us via ballot at, sorry, marketing at ballot.com. And one last thing, remember to watch your inbox for the email containing all the material and the recording of this session in the new, near future. So thanks again for joining us today.